Could you comment on uh, Angelette's observation that the only book you need to read to be the is the Bible? <laughs> Yeah, well, there's an awful, the Bible, you see, is so totally misunderstood by a lot of people. You know, um, people say, oh, it's in the Bible, it must be true. That's nonsense. There's every sin you can think of is recounted in the Bible. And things you haven't even thought of, unless you've read Forty Shades of Green. You know. <laughs> I understand, I understand, I have to read. Uh, but the Bible is an amazing collection of books of so many different kinds that to talk about the Bible as though it were an entity, it isn't. The only common thing about the Bible is that most of the books of the Bible are the res written responses of communities over a period of a thousand years to their understanding of what God was about. Now, that is a common thing. Now, there's... The most erotic and beautiful love poem you've ever read, Song of Songs, sometimes called Song of Solomon's, is in the Bible. And you, you should read it, it's a beautiful poem. It's one of my weaknesses, is poetry, and uh, it's a beautiful poem. But, um, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's an awful lot of stuff in the Bible that puts you off guard. You see, the churches are very selective. Um, and yeah, certainly the evangelicals are very selective in their use of the Bible. Without having to go too much into your own into personal detail, yeah. you've, you've talked about the actual not act of coming out as an atheist, but when how people's reactions to to you going, but actually, I'm uh, actually not that anymore. Yeah. Do you know, it's one thing for maybe me to come turn around and go, I, I, I mean, yeah. I don't have a, a ministry background, but, so mm -hmm. I imagine that, that yeah. people's reactions would be good, not necessarily going into in depth family details, sure. but people's reactions, how to response. Yeah. I actually came out, which is a, a, a term I'm quite happy to use, I actually came out as an atheist in, in my second memoir. I published a second memoir called The Rector Who Wouldn't Pray for Rain. And uh, in that I came out as, a, a, as being atheist, not believing in anything. But I didn't use the word atheist purposely because immediately that gets the hackles of, of, of a lot of religious people. But everything I said, I said I did not believe in the divinity of Jesus, I did not believe in life after death, and all of those kind of things. So I came out in that. And amongst my friends, people say, have your, well, two things they ask me about being atheist and having been a former clergyman. One is, is the church paying you a pension? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they are, and it was never an issue. You know, I soldiered and I did the work, and... Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, if somebody in the church decided they were going to stop my pension because I didn't believe in God anymore, I've absolutely no doubt that the High Court or Supreme Court would uh, support me. But I wouldn't go I, because I wouldn't want to go do anything like that. But no, no, that's never been an issue. Never. Been. And they say, well, what about your former colleagues and so on? Well, as you know, uh, two of them, I talked about the man in Australia, um, Two of them have made remarks where they brought something up. As I say, I don't bring it up with any of them, uh, unless they want to, and then I'll respond. But they made throw, one said a throwaway comment, and he might be right after all. You know that kind of thing? There's one bishop of the Church of Ireland who was a student of mine when I was at the college, who when he's in Dublin almost always drops in for a and amongst my former clerical friends, none of them has uh, distanced themselves from it. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I suppose like many people that come here today not to be convinced that we all have worked out ourselves that we don't believe or whatever. But yeah. that Alan, the Bahamut book, the great, the shows, okay, not on one side. Did you read it? Have you read it? Half the road. Sorry? I'm Halfway through it. Yeah, right, okay. So you can't get from the line to the line till we class. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do we go from here? What's the role of that, say, for the next 20, 30, 40 years? Because you are, you are outside something that's established, and there really, I know this group is my first day here. Are you asking me what the roadmap is? Yeah, what is the roadmap? Well, the roadmap for the next 20 years for me is the crematorium up in. Uh... <laughs> 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 that's probably the first significant event. Yeah. <laughs> 
stepped outside, if you step outside the witch was a day and you step outside all that community, yeah. what's left? Well, <coughs> I may be an odd bob, but I don't have a need of, of those things personally. And I think a lot of people don't have a need. A, to be long, I, I was always unclubbable. You know what I mean by that. I never liked joining things. I joined sports clubs when I was very young and so on. But, uh, for instance, when you're in the Ministry of the Church of Ireland, oh, as you get a bit senior, you're elected onto this diocesan council and this thing and that missionary. And I made it plain in the diocese, and obviously I didn't want to be elected onto anything. I didn't want to go to meetings. I was happy in the parish, and that was enough for me. Um, I don't know what people do, but some people may feel the, the need of uh, community and to be involved with a group. And so I personally, yeah, maybe my, I don't feel that need. And I mean, I, I have enough to keep me going with my writing. That's what I'm doing now. And um, I, I'm exhausted by it sometimes, you know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, I, your question is a good one. Yeah, I, I don't know is the answer. I don't know. But you see, for instance, this friend of mine who decided at the age of 12 or 14 that he was atheist, and Ricky has done nothing of, you know, he, he, I don't believe the stuff, and he's never believed the stuff. And he has no community or, I mean, he has rituals. Ritual is an interesting concept because, you know, going on holidays every year can be a particular kind of ritual. Or a walk down to get your cross on on a Saturday morning for breakfast can become a ritual, you know, there, but th th that's trivializing the term when you measure it over against the Christian church and the Eucharist, which is the very essence of a ritual. But I, do, I really don't know the answer. Uh, could a very, very simple yeah. uh, aspect of that question or answer be that within every one of us there is a specific, literally specific strength, ability, talent, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it shows up in so many ways in our lives. And I just, in answer to that question, for a person to look with awareness within themselves to see where that strength yeah. now has an opportunity to expand and yeah. benefit. Develop it. And yeah. develop it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the question for those who may not have heard is, we, uh, we all have within us, because of our uniqueness as human beings, unique talents and abilities and uh, aptitudes and so on. And that is something of developing or become, A, becoming aware of them, isn't that what you're saying? And then developing them. And you see, I, I used to try and teach our children that the only one, in, even in the ministry when I was still in the ministry, that the only fulfilling thing ultimately in life, to make sense of life, is doing things for other people. And I still think that's true, and I, I'm afraid I don't do very much. <laughs> uh, the, the work that Rory Quinn is doing in the Department of Education trying to open it up mm. to non-religious, uh, I think gives possibly a great opportunity for non-religious to be part of society and to yes. develop respect. How do you think we can get across the fact that uh, the respect we have for human beings doesn't need religion, it can be non-religious? Yeah. Uh, how best do you think we can get that? Yes. Well, I, I, I think for people who believe that, and I believe it, obviously, mm -hmm. that you don't need to have religion to justify respect for other human beings and to accept diversity and all of those things. I think parents teaching their children that and not allowing them to be exposed to religious education, to be indoctrinated by anybody else. Now, it's very interesting that our society has moved on. I mean, it's quite unbelievable I, I was born at the end of 1939, and it's now 19, whatever it is. And over that period of time, when you consider how Irish society has changed, we've lived in the most unbelievable change. And um, when the hearings in the Dáil were held on the abortion issue, there was an official invitation and representation on behalf of the Atheist Society. Now, isn't that something? When you consider 30, 40 years ago, unthinkable, when the school teacher was sacked if the parish priest or, or rector thought that they might be an atheist or if they said something that indicated that they teach the stuff that they don't believe in themselves. 
you know, I, I think it's, it happens in the home, and, and, and there, there's a broader sense in which it happens in society when enough people talk about it. Um, just on the point of teaching a kid that they're flawed, uh, the terminology I would have an issue with in regard to, because it gives them a standard that if we've fallen below a standard, and that standard would have to be set by someone, uh, you know, the idea would be that to teach a kid that they're fallible, or uh, that humans are fallible, is a different aspect than saying that they're flawed, as if there's something oh, well, wrong with them. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. I use the word flawed, you could use any of a half dozen different words to try and say the same thing. Mm. We're not perfect, yeah. is, is what flawed, I meant by flawed. We are fallible. Fallible. We are oh, absolutely yeah. human. We are human and we yeah. fail. Yeah. We all, yeah, sure. No, I'm happy with that, yeah. Yes. When you consider the damage that organized religion has done, yeah. right, surely it behoves us to do more now at this juncture. Yes. Because, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I come to a community and I am involved, right, right? But basically, like, what I see is middle class people. Yeah. Educated people, yeah. right? Okay, we really should actually like, come along, right, and realize that there's other people out there sure. like us. They might not have the confidence that yeah. we have, yeah. but we need to go. To, we need to go to see them. Yeah. We need to do it. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's enough for us as a society here to just be content. We've got our values. We can come here. I think religion has. Uh, yeah. We we have got. It's, it, I suppose. It, what has happened really is the perfect storm of religion. And it's our time now to actually take advantage of it yeah. the first time ever. Because people are willing to listen to it. So I, I do think that we should do more. I, th I agree with you. I think you're right. But the question arises as to how you do that without becoming what religion was. Well, I mean, okay, well, it was that to hear. To for us today, we saw a gentleman doing the penny dinners. Mm. Okay? Mm. We can actually, That's we can actually go out and actually identify That's sources right. like that, right? Okay, and do that. Way. That's the best way of doing it, actually, okay. is by what you do rather than what you say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you, but I suppose at this stage I feel, well, for me, I'm too old and too maybe set to become uh, aggressively or positive. I would never, I hope, be aggressively involved in anything, but to be. Uh, I'm happy just to struggle with the issues for myself. I support people who go out, but uh, fundamentally you're right, and I agree with you. And But the way to do it is uh, to be careful how you do it, and uh, how you'll achieve what you want to achieve is by what you do rather than what you say. Does that, is that, do you want to come back? Well, well I, to be honest with you, I, I told 50 miles to see you today, right, okay? Uh, uh, one way, a hundred miles, two ways. Yes. Right, we're talking, right? And the reason why I died is that your story is so important to be heard. Okay? I felt that your background, like being watching the world, yes. okay? and turning around, like, right, okay? that your work, your work being listened to. Okay? Yeah. And you certainly, haven't, you, you certainly haven't disappointed me. Yeah. But the point Thank is, you. you telling me that you can't do any more, you know, the very fact that what you've done, and if people actually have. If you've got the publicity, right, okay? It's the old story, like, right? Someone has to come out, come out first, and you'd be surprised to follow. Well, I, I do it in, the, in, in that I come to meetings like this, and I go to, went to the uh, Dublin Humanist. I did an interview on the, uh, what do you call it? John Murray. What? John Murray. John Murray Show, yes, uh, where I talked about my atheism and, and, and so on. That seems to suit me better than. Uh, that's about as much I can cope with as far as energy is concerned, and my own writing. And in my own writing, I do it. In these two books that that are here, that were published last year, uh, they are making the atheist point in passing, as well as other things. Uh, so maybe you're. Ch I'd have to think about it. Maybe you're challenging me, enough. <laughs> and, and you're maybe disturbing me. But I think I'll think about it on the way back in the train. <laughs> Thank you.